Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining today's EAC webinar. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist at EAC. We'll start off today with a brief overview of EAC, and then uh, PTC's Technical Specialist, Emily Pinto, will be presenting on what's new in Creo 6.0. Uh, everyone will get a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Uh, please remember to use the questions panel as needed. Um, it is important that everybody knows that our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. We are proud to be the number one uh, solutions provider for PTC in the country, offering our customers everything they need for product development uh, to stay ahead of the game with advancements in the latest technology. So what do we offer as a business? Um, quite a bit, actually. We offer uh, service lifecycle management software, which helps you create and manage service documentation. Uh, product management software like Windchill, ThingWorks Navigate, and our customizable EAC productivity apps, which helps you to manage internal product data. Uh, we, am, er, yeah, we implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around uh, digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. We assist with uh, design and engineering projects like FEA, simulation, reverse engineering, and uh, proof of concepts for our customers. And we offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. We are also a commercial reseller for Form Labs, um, offering their latest products in additive manufacturing. Uh, we're still offering support and consumables for uh, the Form 2. That being said, the Form 3 is now available with packages starting at $34.99. So uh, please keep us in mind. We really have all the tools to help your organization save time and money throughout the product development process. Um, and then today we'll be focusing on what's new in the latest version of Creo. So I will hand things over to Emily whenever she is ready. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Pinto. I work in the Virtual Center of Excellence for PTC. I'm an application engineer. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the exciting new capab capabilities available in Creo 6. So a lot of challenges that customers face today in the, in the engineering realm is blending that digital and physical world. Uh, so PTC continuously makes updates to uh, Creo to their platforms to help do this better. Uh, so today we're going to talk about improvements in our AR design share, which is our augmented reality uh, sharing capabilities, product productivity and usability, our simulation-driven design, and our design for additive manufacturing. So all of these tools that help you take that physical thing in the physical environment and that digital twin and merge them together, giving you more control and insight to your project, to your product. Um, so this is uh, Creo Parametric 6. Uh, helps you blend these two worlds together, giving you an, an edge in that digital world. We can start with talking about augmented reality. We have changes uh, that make it easier to build, show, and share your product in augmented reality. So some capabilities, uh, improvements around viewing AR. Now in your base Creole license, you are able to publish up to 10 models at a time per user. So you can publish more than that. You'll just have to unpublish some. So you can only have 10 published at a time. And when a model is published, you know, that's when other people that you've shared it with are gonna be able to see it. You're gonna be able to see it in augmented reality. We also have capabilities for generating a QR code for launching the AR experience. Uh, so you still have the option to use a thing mark or a spatial target, but now you can also use that QR code that you can send to someone, uh, you know, by a link or, or other means, and we have support for HoloLens. So this is a great way to do design reviews. You're able to see your model, interact with it hands-free, you know, looking at it in the real world with, with this HoloLens wearable. More uh, administration control. So who has access to your uh, AR products that are published? Uh, we've made it easier to share with people that you'd like to share it with, easier to work with uh, with the user interface. 
and easier to keep your information private if you don't want someone to see your model or, or your product. So we have an option for public versus restricted where you can require a username and password uh, in order to see your product. You can require only certain emails that you've allowed to be able to view it uh, you know, through, that, through their login and um, making it easier to share on the other side. If you do want to share it with people, you can send multiple emails uh, at a time. So you just enter the emails that you want. You don't have to send them individually anymore. You're able to send out a big batch of emails for people who you want to be able to view uh, your AR experience. New capabilities for our simulation-driven design. Uh, simulation challenges traditionally, uh, you know, with traditional simulation uh, software, you, if you use it as part of your design process, it can be quite cumbersome. So you might have to uh, consult an expert. You might have to um, defeature your model. You can't actually use the CAD model that, that you have built. You have to take away some of those uh, complexities, some of the smaller details in order to run an effective simulation. And this is an iterative process. So you make your model, you, you simplify it for analysis, you send it to an expert to, to run, or if you have an expert on your team, they have to take the time to run it. You catch some problems, then you have to go back to the beginning where you're changing your model again. So to get to a good product can take quite some time. Uh, so our solution is uh, trying to merge this uh, concept and design stage with simulation. So instead of using simulation at the end of the design stage, we offer a technology, our Creo Simulation Live technology that allows you to do simulation early and often while you're designing. This wasn't designed for an, a, a specialist to use. This is for every engineer to be able to do simulation whenever they need to at any point during creation and design uh, because it's fast, it's easy, and it's right on your screen inside of your Creo environment. So this is a new, brand new technology, uh, this real-time design. This is uh, came to Creo by working with ANSYS in a partnership, and they are a leader in simulations. This is their new technology, cutting edge, that we've brought into Creo, uh, so you can use all of those capabilities while you're still in your modeling environment. Um, so every engineer can use this without a lot of training, without taking a lot of time up from their design activities, um, just supposed to add to that design process, not, not another step along the way that, that would take time from designing. So here we have a short video uh, on the right, uh, just demonstrating how this can be used, what it looks like inside Creo. So uh, one of the big points here is speed. This is an instantaneous simulation experience. But we also have that geometry enabled, so you're able to model while you're running the simulation. Uh, and it's fast and easy to set up. So you see here, uh, we're just adding some, some constraints and loads. We're putting a force on a certain surface or point. And then we're, that's all the setup we need to do. We're able to simulate. So we'll press our simulate button. And in only a matter of seconds, here we already have our von Mises stress shown on the part. It's displayed graphically on the model. You can see where are your highest stress points, what's that value, you know, gives you an idea for how your product's going to behave, how your design's going to behave under this condition. And so now we're able to add a rib. So if we're going to change the geometry. Maybe we don't like the stresses that our analysis showed. They were higher than we thought they would be, or they're in the wrong spot. So let's try to make a design change, and it'll update automatically in the background. So here we have this flat section with the rib coming through it now, and we can see how that changed the stress distribution uh, you know, on our surface. You can also change the simulation, so add a new one. So here we're adding a new force. It only takes a second. You hopped right from your modeling environment, adding that rib, coming over, changing the simulation in a matter of seconds. It updates automatically, so you're able to see now there are more stresses in different places. And you can go right back into your modeling environment. So it really doesn't take any time away. We just hop over into the other tab and we model like we normally would. However, you typically model parametrically, uh, you know, direct editing. You're gonna have all those you know, same capabilities just now with simulate running in the background to give you a good idea of what those design changes are doing to the performance of your product. So really powerful technology. It doesn't take any time to, to simplify. You can make all of those great edits and you can run this for structural, thermal, and modal. So this is 
very fast linear analysis. It's an auto mesh, so you don't have to worry about any of that meshing. It does it in the background for you. Um, you know, and it can it can mesh anything you give it. So complex assemblies, small small holes and features, no problem. You know, it can mesh that perfectly and run that analysis for you. So we also have um, leverage mechanism loads. Talk about some of the other capabilities here. If you take uh, loads from mechanism, your mechanism extension, you can push those into CSL, into our, our CREO uh, simulation live, and use those loads to set up an analysis. You can also promote part level boundary conditions to a top level assembly. So let's say you're running an analysis on a couple of parts. You've already set up those loads and constraints. You wanna, you wanna analyze the whole assembly now, no problem. You don't have to duplicate your work. All of that work you did for the part is gonna be taken and used at that assembly level. So you won't have to define anything there. We can also define simulation bodies. Uh, of course, the simulation live has no trouble in only a couple of seconds doing a full analysis on complex, large assemblies. Um, but if you wanted to, to define a body, you could do that as well. Um, so a lot of control over how your analysis is run and how you view those results. And this has been pushed into versions of Creo 4 and 5. Um, so a little bit of um, capabilities coming back there. Improvements in Creo 6 for productivity. Um, so productivity and usability uh, improvements, making it easier to do what you want, giving you more control to do the things that you want to do in, in the way you want to do them. Our first little topic here is our mini toolbar. So our mini toolbar uh, come, is now available for feature creation and modification. So when you click on your model to add or change a feature, you're going to get a mini toolbar to pop up. And this is going to be tied exactly to what you're doing. It's in context access to those most important options. Uh, so you can stay in your design world. You can stay right there on the piece that you're looking at. Uh, you know, don't have to move your mouse around and look for buttons in your toolbar. You're going to have quick access to all of the most important functions for for the job that you're doing. As you can see here in our video, we've made some modifications quickly and easily. We also have uh, improvements to the model tree. We've made a more clear indication of what's going on. So in an assembly with an active component, everything else is going to gray out so you can see exactly where it is that you're working. Um, we also have insert mode, so where are we? We put a bar there so you can see where the insert mode is. It's easier to work with in here. Very logical. And common filters. If you want to have features shown and suppressed features not shown, those will stay on by default. So if you move from part to part, those filters that you've added to your model tree, they're going to go with you from part to part. Auto save, um, it, it, it will auto save that setting for you. So you can still set up your config files if you want to do that to, to have that be your default. Um, but this just makes it easier. So hopefully you won't have to do that. And you can just use that auto, trade, auto save setting to keep your model tree organized the way that you like it to be. We have improvements to graphing. Our surface analysis or Creo features that generate graphs you're now going to have more control over uh, what kind of graph you're making, what, what those details are on the graph, what's shown, what's visible, uh, different colors, so we can have gradients, uh, making it a little bit prettier. Maybe you're giving this to someone um, you know, that outside your group that needs to see this data. It's going to look really nice and professional now. A lot of options over how your graph's going to be presented. So as we look at this video here, it just shows you some of the new options that you have. Um, so here we have a lot of styles and setup, uh, different, different types of graphs that we can see, different ways of distributing the data. And we have a, a, a mini um, identifier that pops up right next to your mouse, so uh, giving you more control over, over your graph. Interfaces, so some of the features got new interfaces. Um, this is the whole feature, uh, that new, new skins and, and new dashboards for everything in that whole feature. We also have uh, direct edit access to help. In the new dashboard, there's a little help button paragraph. So as you scroll over a function, it's going to pop up with a little, a little um, you know, icon here or a little menu that shows 
okay, this is this is the, the feature that you're looking at. Here's a short description, what it's used for, how to use it. Uh, and if you click on that, you can it'll take you to the help the full help menu and it'll give you a bigger description of, of what that feature does. So this is really great if um, you know someone who's new to Creo or someone who maybe doesn't use the whole feature often or, or features that this is available for. Uh, it'll it'll give you a little bit more information about what you're doing. Increased productivity and sheet metal. Uh, so more intuitive ways of working with walls. Uh, building a flat wall and getting instant options for corners, that's a big one. So you, you can have those options right there available. Uh, it knows what kind of corner you want to make and it, and it helps you out with that. Themes and reliefs with neighboring walls, it can do that as well. So uh, being able to choose the type of, of interaction you want there between those walls and an instant preview. So maybe you're not sure which one is the best or, or what it's referring to. So you can see that preview now to make sure uh, before you click OK that this is indeed the wall or the corner that, the, the, what, that you want to make. Um, so new dashboards for merging those walls, changes to that merge function in general, giving you more control, more uh, opportunity to, to make changes, and that, that really intuitive uh, Creo UI. So a lot of improvements here over making it easier to do what you want to do, making it faster to do it. We also have this volume sweep. So uh, this was new to Creo 5, uh, model a solid, uh, a solid model sweeping through a helical sweep, showing that true cut, not just a cross section. Uh, but now in Creo 6, you're able to generate that helical sweep curve. Uh, so the trajectory that that's going to follow, it's always uh, displayed, but you can take that now, that, that trajectory, that, that curve, and make it a separate entity. So if you want to use that curve as for something else, if you want to take it to manufacturing, uh, you, you have the ability to do that now because it, it can be saved as a separate feature. Uh, this is also available in the normal helical sweep as well. Uh, so more control over that, less duplicate work, uh, making it easier to work uh, you know, forwards and backwards in that, in that production line. Point projection. You are now able to project a datum point feature. So if you have a vertex or a curve or an endpoint somewhere that you want to project onto another plane or, or onto a surface of your product somewhere, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, so, you know, as this is a simple addition that is a big time saver being able to project a point and, and you know, not just a point, but a curve and or a vertex or, or anything like that onto a different plane. New uh, defaults for drill tip angles. So if you create a hole uh, and you have that standard drill tip angle, you're now able to change that default. So if you typically work with a certain uh, you know, drill tip, then you can make that your default so that you don't have to do that every time or, or you know, play with the options. So you can always change it in the definition when you're building the hole, uh, but here we have the option now to just leave that. That is the default all the time. More control over your notes. So we have a new interface, just like dimensions and tolerance, uh, the interface for those. And you can click on a note and you get a dashboard of fonts, words, and symbols. So you can bring this into the same uh, context as other annotation features. Um, flexibility when you're working with an annotation, you can move it to other features. Just trying to save a lot of time, save a lot of duplicate work. Uh, so more control over your features, your notes, and a little bit more flexibility uh, with what you're able to do with them. We also have the automatic notification of maintenance releases. This is a new notification that you can get when we come out with a yearly release or an interim release, letting you know, uh, you know what's new. So what's new in Creo 6.0.0.2. Uh, you know, we have a couple of different bullets there, and it can tell you this every time we, we release um, any kind of a maintenance release for any of the products. We have new emissive lighting in Render Studio. So uh, anything that's, that's emitted from an object, any light that's emitted from an object, like a light bulb or, or something else, uh, you can have that shown now as 
coming from that source. So um, pick a component or pick a surface and show that that's a light source and you want to shed light on, on, the rest of the, uh, on the rest of the scene. You also have animation available. So if you have a Render Studio license, when you want to have an animation, you have that option now. Uh, so being able to utilize that to, to display how your product will move in a very realistic way, um, in, in a very realistic light. We are now able as well to take the drawing name directly from a part or assembly. So a little bit of improvement here over um, kind of a detailing. So if you have a drawing, you, have, you can pick a model to make a drawing of. Uh, that will automatically take the name to match. So uh, keeps everything a little bit more simplified. You, you know exactly which model this drawing is for, and you know exactly which drawing uh, you know shows the model that you're looking at. So if you check a box when you start your new drawing, uh, you know you're able to to do that. Uh, usability, so configuring your background options for dimension display. Um, this is available for edit dimensions and workflows. So we pick colors, uh, PTC, you know, picks colors that would work for a lot of people for these background colors. Um, but if it's not working for you or for your part color or, uh, you know, your eyes, you can change it however you want. So change the dimensions background to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Improvements to additive manufacturing. So lots of effort here by PTC having bringing this additive manufacturing capability. A couple of new lattice structures. So the first one here that we're going to talk about is the stochastic lattice support. This is a beam-based randomized lattice cell. And so what that means is that uh, there's a bunch of intersecting beams that are, are in random orientations and random intersections to create kind of a foam, a foam type um, structure of these interconnected beams. This is great for conforming to uh, certain surfaces. So you can see we have a cat here that these these beams are able to easily fill out the surface of that while, while maintaining a lot of that empty space that, that minimizes material. Um, so a really great option uh, for a lot of applications. We also have formula-driven lattices. Uh, so we have three new types, gyroid, primitive, and diamond. And the great thing about these is that they are self-supporting. Uh, so you're not gonna need uh, support material to hold up these lattices. They're going to support themselves. They have the critical angles. Angles, you know, this is what the formula does: is it, it decides, okay, you know, what's what's the best angle, the orientation, the shape, you know, that isn't going to need to be supported that can support itself while it's being printed. So we have the option for gyroid, primitive, and diamond, um, and and you're able to fill those in just like any other lattice that you would have. Able to change a lot of those parameters, thickness and such, uh, size, but you are able to do that without support. We also have the option for custom lattice cells. So defining a part as a lattice cell to propagate through, uh, through your piece. So you, you, make it, you make a part the way you want. You, you can create a, you know, something that you want to have propagated through. Um, and then you just pick that part file, bring it into to the model that you want to use it as a cell, and then tell it, this is a custom cell. I want you to create a lattice out of this part. Um, so you know, if someone comes up with something crazy or there's, there's a new lattice type that you think would be really useful, but for some reason it's not one of the, the provided ones that Creo has, you're able now to make that and, and try that out yourself. So um, anything you can think of now, you can use really for an additive manufacturing lattice. More capabilities for lattice transitions. So instead of, uh, you know, just I want transitions. I don't think you have a lot of control over those transitions. So uh, increasing the support, you have better support for your lattice, less material, better print times. You're able to keep that strength without changing the whole lattice, you know, just add it to the transition and call it a day. Uh, so you're going to have fewer support structures um, that, that you need to do this. We have build direction analysis. So 
uh, knowing which orientation is the best for printing. Uh, and, and, you know, not just at the end, of course, you could use this analysis after your model is designed to say, what's the best way for me to put this on a tray? What's going to minimize my support material? What's going to increase my, my print times, you know, or, or rather speed up my print times, so build this the fastest way, and um, less, uh, less post-processing. So you can do that at the end, or you can do this while you're building your product. So you look at it from a design perspective. If you do it early in the process, you're going to be able to see, okay, well, you know, just like I, you would uh, optimize a part for any other type of manufacturing, let me optimize this part for additive manufacturing. So look at the orientation of your lattice, look at the orientation of your angles or, or whatever it might be, and, and take that into the manufacturing space to make a better product. This has extended support for 3MF files. So bring that material and colors information with you. Um, it also includes uh, information for beam lattices. So if you're going to use a beam lattice, 3MF is a great option. Connectivity and slicing support. So slicing support is great for a couple of things. Uh, one, you're able to have more control over your product. You're going to know exactly what, what the process is going to be uh, when you go to manufacture this. You're going to see, be able to see each slice and, and say, yeah, this is going to work, or, or no, I, you know, I want to make some changes. It's also great because these uh, CLI outputs are, make it easier to communicate with other machines. So if you uh, want to use a machine that, that you, know, you need a little bit more control, you're going to be able to use these slicing uh, files to do that. So um, you can export these in the, the CLI format uh, and, and do it inside the build tray. Support for assemblies. Um, so uh, well, here we're talking about topology optimization. So if you want to optimize a given shape in the context of the assembly, you can do that now. So as opposed to just saying, here are the loads that I have on, on this one part. What's the best uh, part for this situation? Now you can say, here are the loads and, and constraints of my whole assembly. What's the best, uh, you know, optimize all of these parts, optimize my assembly for this. Um, so you can optimize a part in context of the larger assembly. We also have improved results window. So when you run your optimization study, you're going to be able to, to view, have more control over how you view those results. We have an animation. So running through the whole process, starting with the piece that you gave it and slowly going through those iterations, you can animate those iterations to see how it got to the, piece, the part uh, that it gives you at the end. Um, so greater control in the results window, uh, seeing what it looks like, understanding uh, you know, exactly what's going on with your product. We also have more tools to edit the resulting um, reconstructed mesh, so being able to, to have control over how this piece is going to go from your faceted piece into that, uh, that pro the CAD model that you're able to make changes to, so controlling you know, some of those different faceted um, simplification. New tools for... Um, and this is the reconstruction, so new tools for, for that detail of reconstruction, um, and you have that facet from within freestyle. Our annual release schedule here we have. Uh, so here you can see our, our made next major release is Creo 7. That's the, the green bars, our major releases, but we have, um, you know, releases in between. So here you can see our Dotted line is the reduced maintenance release, and the solid line is full maintenance release every three months. Um, so if you had any questions about what's coming when, this might be able to help you out. Okay, I have a short demonstration of what some of this looks like inside of Creo. So especially talking about that additive manufacturing that I can show you right now. So here we're going to look at our uh, snowmobile. This is a data set from one of our customers. This is a full CAD model, so um, you know, just a, a real model like anyone else might have that they want to take to manufacturing. And here we're looking at the swing arm. So 
this has a lot of different welded parts. This has a lot of you know, pieces that you have to make separately and, and bring together. It's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be time consuming. Maybe additive manufacturing is a better option for this part. Maybe that's the cheaper, better way uh, to do it, to create a quality product. So if we bring in a new part, we can see that we've already created a version of this with a lattice in it. So we just load in our part file. And here we've shelled those two inside bars and added a lattice to fill it in. So looks pretty good. Um, but you know, is this the best part that we can make? Is this the lattice we want? Well, sometimes that can be hard, but with Creo, we have a lot of options to edit those lattices um, simply with, with these great menus. So here we can see the lattice region that we've selected. We can change that if we want to, and we can change the lattice type. So we're gonna look at our, our formula-driven lattices first. We are gonna look at gyroid. We just choose the cell size that we want. And you see here, we're making these changes to the lattice just like we would make changes to any other part, you know, fill, filling out those parameters, uh, changing dimensions. It's even though this, this lattice is a very complex piece of geometry, we're able to make changes to it as if it was any other part that, that we have, any other feature that we have included. So here we can see that, that this is the formula driven lattice um, that you can create without support structure. So we have a couple different types of those and we can go through all of those now, just take a look. We have the primitive. Um, and the great thing about this is that you have less support material. So you're gonna have faster times, uh, you know, faster times to, to build this, uh, less post-processing. And of course, you know, reduce your material cost, which, which is a big one. We have this available for plastic and metal, metal printers. Uh, so a great option. For metal printing, um, you know, especially with that support structure with the complications that can come with that. Here we have our diamond. So this preview button is really nice. We're able to see all of these different lattices. So before we make any changes to our model, we're able to see, yes, this is this is looks like a better idea, this is what I want, or you know what, I you know, I think I liked the original better. Let's stick with that. Now you you are not able to um, you simulate with those formula driven lattices. So in a minute, we're gonna take this into simulate, which works perfectly on all of the other lattices that we have, but it's not yet supported for those formula driven lattices. So we're gonna stick with our primitive lattice here. And um, so we're able to do that. But before we go there, we're gonna look at our AR design share. So as you see, we just clicked a button from our tools bar, from our tool menu, and we're able to select uh, you know, a spatial target. So put your target where you want it to go, the orientation that you want your part to be seen relative to, to a floor or a wall, and then select here as you publish it, what type of quality you want. So this is our CAD optimizer, this viewable quality. We have the option for low, medium, and high. And what this does is it basically takes out a lot of the unneeded information from the CAD file uh, to bring it into the AR file. So a lot of you know dimensioning and, and small information, information that you needed to design this parametrically or, or however you did, but that you don't need to see, you know, to be able to see the outside of this model um, in an AR experience. So a couple of great things about this one, it's a lighter file, uh, so you're not gonna have to wait around for this huge CAD file to load into augmented reality. It's gonna lighten it up uh, quite significantly, even on the high setting and, um, it's going to allow you to share it without sending any of that, you know, IP CAD information. So here we've hopped into our, our design portal. This is where we're gonna manage our design experiences. So as you see, we've published this primitive lattice model. We can see it's a spatial target and we can restrict the access. So, you know, those controls I was talking about earlier, being able to say, no, only people with these emails and only if they have the password are they gonna be able to see this model to be able to share it with those people, you can click that share option and, and select multiple emails at once. So just a lot more control here over all these little icons. Coming back to our model, we can delete that um, AR experience. Maybe we're not done. You know, We wanted to send this model to someone uh, to get their idea on the concept, but we wanna do a little bit more, a little bit more validation before 
we decide that this is the model that we want to use. So coming into our simulate, this is just a, a button inside Creo that gives us this new toolbar of, of tools to run our simulation and control our simulation. So we have two constraints already set in our constraint. And we have a couple loads already set. They were made very easily with those buttons at the top. Um, and simulate, the simulate toolbar, the simulate process is very similar to that Creo Simulation Live process. Uh, so even a little bit more simplified in the Creo Simulation Live. Um, so very quick, very easy to do. Uh, a great analysis tool for people who don't want to take the time to become analysis experts, but still want that speed and that high fidelity, that effective simulation. So to run an analysis, we just click on an analysis study. We can choose the type that we want. Here we've already run it just to save time, but even with a lattice in our part, Simulate has absolutely no problem running a fast and effective simulation on this. So uh, you know, it, it knows what lattices are, it knows why it's there, and it knows exactly what to do with it. So here we're able to see, okay, well, it looks like there's a little bit of deformation, a little bit of stress here, uh, but you know, what does that look like compared to the old model? So is this a better design? than the model I had before without the lattice. With Simulate, you're gonna be able to know for sure. So you can even bring those results in to show side by side. And you can see these are both the deformations. Uh, and if we tie those together, when we zoom in on one, we can zoom in on the other. Just a little trick uh, to tie your orientation. And then we can investigate that stress, that high stress area. So it looks like there's definitely a reduction in stress in this spot with the lattice design. So not only is this gonna be better for manufacturing, but it's going to be a better quality product, uh, perform better in the real world. So Once we exit out of that, we're gonna be able to start preparing this for 3D printing. So a lot of, uh, a lot of, capabilities around setting your model up to be printed in the most optimal way. So that's a great way not only to print your design well, but also to design your, your part you know, in a way that's, that's compatible with, with how you want to print it. So here you can see we're in our build direction analysis, and we can see a couple of different options we have over here. We want to set our critical angle we want to we want to analyze the downskin area, so which way is going to give us the less support structure you know needed? We can do a couple of different things. You can analyze it to see what's the best orientation to see how more will fit on the tray. This one is to you know minimize that support structure, and you can see it converge uh, onto a certain orientation, which you're able to then save and use when you go to put this on the tray. Uh, so you can save that orientation. You can investigate it too. We have these color-coded uh, you know, lines to say what's facing down, what's gonna have support structure, uh, you know, what's going on with your product and how's this gonna be printed. So we can put that into the build direction orientation. We've already saved uh, a coordinate system for our build direction. And we're able to start uh, prepping this for, for 3D print. So. We'll just save a copy. And we can save this as a 3MS file. So keeping all of that information tied to it. Uh, so all of our lattice information and our colors and our build direction, that's all gonna be saved in our 3MS. So if we open this again or send it to someone else, they're gonna get have all that great information that, that you've put into your model. So opening this up for, for preparing to print, we're gonna even have control inside Creo, or have control over how we're gonna arrange this on the tray. Uh, so really having a lot of say in every step of this process. So we can generate the support, and we have a bunch of different parameters for managing our support material, it's very important. Uh, so we can come in and, and change our self-supporting angle. We have all sorts of uh, different, different parameters that you're able to change to to have that kind of control. And visually, it'll show you exactly what's going on. So as we connect to the printer that we want to use, we can make sure that everything's going to fit, everything's going to look, look good. 
and we can even preview that. So here's the print area, here's our part, here's our support structure, and then we can generate a, a slicing file. So this is very quick, only a couple of seconds, and the slicing file is going to have each and every layer of our part that's going to go into the printer. So we can look at those in you know, one by one uh, or by a slice number where we can play, you know, through an animation. So this is how many layers that that printer is going to use to put your part together. And then if there are any problems or, or anything of the sort, you know, you can fix those now. And you also have this to send to the printer, whoever's running that, to give them more information. Let's increases your printability, increases the number of machines that you're able to use. And so you can save that as a 3MF file as well. So here we have the CLI files, we have our 3MF files. We're able to view those. We have a nice little viewer that comes up. So you're sure that this is the part that you wanna, you know, if you're sending this to someone or you're opening it, you know that this is the object that's in that part file. So giving you a, a very clear idea of, of what you have. So coming back to our PowerPoint, uh, and I'll pass that over to Cassie again, if you have any questions. Okay, thank you so much, Emily, for that presentation on what's new in Creo 6.0. Um, I don't see any questions in the queue right now, but I do want to mention that we do have a, a few promotions going on right now. Um, the first one is if you buy uh, one Creo license for a minimum of two years, uh, you can get a second license at 50% off. So essentially it's a, a BOGOHO uh, promotion. And then our second offer is that you can save um, with historically low prices up to 84% on bundled uh, packages when trading in your perpetual licenses to subscription. So that's um, one for if you already have a perpetual license of Creo, uh, moving to subscription uh, will save you a lot of money. So both offers um, expire at the end of September. After that, prices are going up in October. So make sure, you know, if you need more Creo seats, um, just reach out to us and um, we'll make sure that you get in touch with the right person to get you that deal. Um, I'll also make sure that these offers are listed in the email with the replay that will be sent out later today. Um, so like I said, if you have any questions or would like to take advantage of the current offers, let me know. And thanks again for joining everyone. Have a great day.